do you take if you take up a, like a challenge that we would give you to mm -hmm. to to um, uh, to seek God and just to find out for yourself once mm -hmm. and for all for yourself not for anybody else not for anybody around you not to impress anybody but just for yourself find out if this God is real mm -hmm. um, I can guarantee you you'll be shocked yeah yeah now in my testimony it's a little bit different than than both of yours and probably most people I talk to um, just because. I don't remember a time my family is pretty much a Christian family, you know, um, we're definitely not perfect, you know, believe me, but um, I remember going to church when I was two, and I'm sure it was earlier than that, but two is when I remember, and I remember coming back from church when I was two um, with my little shoes and dress on and just, you know, just loving Jesus and just thinking it's the greatest thing in the entire world and just naive to the fact that that wasn't, um, how the world operated because in my world that, that was how the world was mm -hmm. operating is, is with Jesus and um, with love and everything was okay um, and as I started getting older I would occasionally run into people that would criticize my faith my religion um, mm -hmm. I'm only a Christian because my family's Christian because that's all I've been taught. Whereas that happened a lot in school, whereas I had also noticed that uh, most of the time they weren't Christian, it was because they were being taught evolution and they chose to believe evolution over the other. And so I'd go to church, learn about, you know, God created the earth in six days. And then I'd go to school and see that they're teaching evolution. And um, I was confused. You know, I didn't want to believe that my teacher was lying to me, but I certainly didn't want to believe that there wasn't a God. But I also, if there was a God, he, if, if evolution was true, then he was lying because the Bible's really clear that it's not evolution. And I think a lot of times people like to mix it just because they don't want to <clears throat> um, point the finger at anybody saying, well, my school is lying to me. Um, so I remember um, I was probably in fourth grade and I kind of sat there during science class and ask God what the deal was, you know, and I said, I know you're, you know, I don't expect you to come out on a loudspeaker and just tell me, but if you tell me the truth, if you can show me what's going on here, mm -hmm. I'll follow you all the days of my life. And one of the things I did too is I would ask um, probably my mom, um, youth pastor, different people from church along the way, and this is mostly what I got. I got, it's um, just have faith. Um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, you know, what, what the world does doesn't matter. Just have faith. And that wasn't good enough for me. Um, I just thought that the church world should have an answer. Um, you know, and, and, and now I'm kind of looking back and I, and I see that there's so many lies in the world. We should counter the lies with truth. You know, it doesn't, uh, I heard that a light, light and darkness, they're not opposites. It's that a, a dark place is only void of light. So everywhere there's a dark, everywhere there's light, a light needs to come in and shine in. And so I was pretty committed after a process of all my questions getting answered mm -hmm. to reveal, to put light into a dark place. And, you know, when I'm on the show, that's what I try to do. I try to address some of those subjects um, the best I can in the limited time I have. Um, so one of those, those questions I want to um, um, talk about, if you have any input, um, that's good. But one of the things that came across to me a lot was, why is your faith any more valuable or mean any more than other faiths? And I don't want to, you know, mention, you know, all of them, but, but there's a lot out there. And... You know, that was a good question. Why is the Bible better than the Quran and, and things like that? And I've actually read a lot of the Quran, so I can <laughs> say easily the Bible is way better. Way, there's, there's truth. And well, let me give you a simple answer, and then John can <laughs> elaborate on the details. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but, you know, in, in my business over the years, I've run into a, a lot of folks, and we get these uh -huh. kind of questions. Um, you know, why this and not that, and, and uh, uh, what separates the kingdom from the rest of them. And really the simple answer um, has been, uh, if you study these religions, the, this faith that we have is the only one where God comes to man. Mm 
Mm -hmm. The rest of them, they're building their way up. They're trying to be good. And if I do enough and, you know, in a couple, four or five lifetimes, I might be acceptable, um, you know, to this God, this mm -hmm. unknown God. And uh, Paul ran into the unknown God, and then he explained who this God was. But, but th the profound difference is our God accepts us where we're at. He came to us, he sacrificed, he laid his life down. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And it's a huge difference. If you study that concept versus every other belief system, it separates there immediately. Yeah, yeah. That's a great answer. Yeah, that is. That's a great answer. Well, and my answers are like, you know, kind of more complex and stuff we don't really have to, to get into. You're a lot smarter than I am. See, I've got to keep it simple. No, well, you know, <laughs> no, no, I think, that, I think that's good, though. I think that, that that's good. And, and there's, that's, that's the point of people being individual is there's, um, I, I have heard that <clears throat> as much as I have tried to logic things with people, I can, I can logic a lot of this stuff. I've learned how to do that. That's been kind of my, my mission in life. But the hearts are what affects people the most. Um, <clears throat> and because I don't have time to logic this right now, um, I am going to ask Pastor John if he could give a, hmm. a salvation altar call. We've never done this on the show before. And I think it's about time that, that we do that, especially um, you know in this season and things that we have coming up. Um, salvation is the reason why God did what he did because he wants Amen. to reunite um, with his people once again. Yeah, I'd like to just read a passage out of the uh, book of Titus, the epistle to Titus from the Apostle Paul. It says this in chapter 3, verse 4, But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And this amazing plan of salvation that uh, we've been talking about today, uh, it all boils down to this one thing, is that God did send his son, and he did take our place. And by dealing with the problem of our sin, which separated us from God, that forbid, forbade us to have a relationship with God, uh, Jesus opened a door. He became a bridge for us. And he, he gave us his Holy Spirit to actually regenerate us, to renew us, so, so that we're not uh, dealing with life uh, on the same terms as before, but we actually have uh, the Holy Spirit of God coming and living inside of every person who chooses to believe. And it all comes down to this idea that I want to leave behind my old life. Uh, I don't want to depend on my own merits uh, to have a relationship with God because it's not about my righteousness, it's about what Jesus has done. And, and so we come and w the word says that when we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that we will we'll be saved, that, we'll, that we come into that relationship. Uh, when, when Peter stood up and preached the first uh, gospel message, uh, in Acts chapter 2, at the end of his sermon, everyone that was listening asked him the question, what shall we do? What do we do now? Because we're hearing this amazing news and we want to respond to it. And so if anyone out there wants to respond to, to this message that we've been talking about, uh, that what we're required to do is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, and be baptized, and the gift of the Holy Spirit will come to you. That it will come to you and to your children. That everyone who believes in this promise uh, will benefit from this promise, and it is a promise from God. And we know that God's word is absolutely certain. It never returns void. Uh, it always accomplishes the purpose for which it was sent. And so uh, if anyone out there today is just asking that question, I want to come into relationship with Jesus Christ. I want to know God that you can pray right where you're at. And uh, if we can do it, I'd love to just pray together yep. just right now. Yeah, great. So if you'd like, you can just pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I come to you right now, and I want to repent of my past life. I want to let go of everything that I've been depending on to do my life, and I want to come to you and submit to your lordship. 
I thank you that you died on a cross for my sin, and I thank you that you rose from the dead so that not only would I be forgiven for the things I've done wrong, but I, that I could actually have a brand new life. And so, Lord Jesus, I want to come and accept that gift that you've given to me, and I want the Holy Spirit to come and live inside of me, and I want that new life to begin to power uh, what I'm doing and how I'm living every day. And I thank you that the, the forgiveness for my sins has been provided for, and I, I want to apply it right now today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. Well, thank you. We are out of time, unfortunately. Well, I'd like to give a mini commercial. Uh, find a loving church, Yes. number one. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a number of them around. There's a number of great pastors. Uh, if you have the opportunity to stop out at Northwest Community Church, mm -hmm. great group of folks, mm -hmm. and uh, you'll experience some help. Yep. Yep. in the journey yep, yep. I um, absolutely agree thank you very much for um, um, listening to our testimonies and I do want to um, reiterate that if anything touched you be um, feel free to contact any one of us and um, uh, Pastor John's church is um, available um, for you to um, visit and see um, if it um, something that is connects with your heart I always like to talk about, um, you know, salvation, accepting Jesus is the first thing um, you do. And if you want to um, have a journey that is really fulfilling, let the Holy Spirit grow in you. That's the second step is be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then number three, the truth. Let the Holy Spirit lead you to the truth. Mm -hmm. These are stepping stones. But void of any one of those, you're not going to have that complete life that um, God has meant for you to have.